the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Dear sisters and brothers, as we come together on this historic day, we do so informed by our faith in Jesus Christ and clinging to a hope that does not disappoint, as we also celebrate the feast of St. Martin de Porres. In a special way, I would like to, it is my privilege, my honor to welcome Deacon Art Miller, a deacon of the Archdiocese of Hartford at St. Mary's Parish in Simsbury, who's with us today. Deacon Art is a nationally known preacher of God's holy scripture. He's traveled throughout the country, raising the need of conversion to radical love, the kind of self-denying love that can only be accomplished through the grace and power offered to us through Jesus Christ. Deacon Miller has devoted his life, throughout his life, not only to the ministry of the church, but for bearing, the wit bearing witness to the love, the power, and the justice of Jesus Christ and how much we need that message these days. He's preached throughout the United States from New England to the Katrina-ravaged Gulf Coast of Mississippi, from the Rocky Mountains of northern New Mexico to the south side of Chicago, teaching and preaching Christ's call to his life-changing radical love. Deacon Miller, welcome to St. Thomas More. What a blessing it is to have you with us today. Dear friends, let us call to mind our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you come to us in word and in sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you reconcile us with one another and with the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who led St. Martin de Porres by the path of humility to heavenly glory, Grant that we may so follow his radiant example in this life as to merit to be exalted with him in heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, have among yourselves the same attitude that is also yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God, something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance, he humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Oh. 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. One of those at table with Jesus said to him, Blessed is the one who will dine in the kingdom of heaven. He replied to him, A man gave a great dinner to which he invited many. When the time for the dinner came, he dispatched his servants to say to those invited, Come, everything is now ready. But one by one, they all began to excuse themselves. The first said to him, I have purchased a field and must go to examine it. I ask you, consider me excused. And another said, I have purchased five yoke of oxen, and I am on my way to evaluate them. I ask you, consider me excused. And another said, I have just married a woman, and therefore I cannot come. The servant went and reported this to his master. Then the master of the house in a rage commanded his servant, go out quickly into the streets and alleys of the town and bring in here the poor and the crippled, the blind and the lame. The servant reported, sir, your orders have been carried out and still there is room. The master then ordered the servant, go out to the highways and hedgerows and make people come in that my home may be filled. For I tell you, none of those men who were invited will taste my dinner. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My goodness. Seems the Lord is having a dinner and folks are invited. But it seems that those who were invited found excuses not to come. They had different excuses and some of them seem a little bit flaky. I, you know that, that first one about, you know, um, I, I was coming but I just bought some land and I need to go see it. Now who has ever gone bought, uh, bought a house before they saw it? Rather flimsy excuse. And the other had bought five yoke of oxen and needed to go check on them. Well, who in the world would ever buy livestock without checking on it first? Now, I may be from the south side of Chicago, but I spent plenty of time on the farm back when I was young. And nobody, I assure you, would buy any, any kind of livestock before they looked at it. And then there was the young man who had just gotten married. Now, I will share with you, I remember when my wife and I first got married, we were looking for parties just so that we could socialize, to get to know others. So all of these excuses seemed to be a bit flimsy. And the master, knowing well that folks just didn't want to come, went out to fill his home because everything was prepared. It was a combination of Thanksgiving and Easter and Christmas and everything was ready and no one was coming. So he said, go out and find people, bring them all in. And his servants, the, the evangelists, if you know what I mean, went out there and found folks and brought them in to, the, to enjoy this scrumptious meal. And still there was room for more. So what is the purpose of this parable that Jesus was telling the Pharisees? Because that's certainly where he was at a banquet. Well, it seems at the time there were those that Christ had brought in, the Jewish people, who had come to fulfill the recognition and the idea that the Messiah has come. And they had rejected that idea, that thought. And so in the story, Jesus tells them, then go out and get others, the Gentiles, as it were, the unclean, those who were looked down upon, those who were the ravages and scavages of that time and place, the unclean, the filthy, the unworthy, were invited in to the kingdom of God. 
Now, I'm not unaware of what this day is. I'm not unaware of the disparity in this great nation that we have. I am not unaware that right at this moment, decisions are being made about who is welcome into our kingdom. I do know that St. Martin de Pours was one of those who was put out. He was not allowed into the Dominican group. He was not allowed in because he was of color. He was one of those who Christ talked about in his parable. He was one of those who weren't welcome. I suppose there is this thought. Whenever we build a fence, Christ might be on the other side of that fence. And what are we fencing in? And what are we fencing out? Our story today is to recognize that fences come in every kind of place and in every kind of person. They made the offense in our heart, a fence around our willingness to love, a fence around our nation, a, a fence around our homes, a fence around our families, a fence around our faith. We as lovers of Christ, lovers of God, must always have that window and that door open for all to be able to come in and enjoy the scrumptious meal that Christ has created. But just as importantly, we are the servants. We are the ones who must go tell the good news so those windows and doors are open not only for those to come in but for us to go out as St. Martin de Porus did to go out to collect and to gather and to spread the good news of Jesus Christ. That is our charge. Every single one of us who calls ourselves a Christian, our charge is to not build a fence around the banquet hall. Our charge is to open wide the gates so that we can go out and others can come in. I need to tell you a little story. A story about my failure. My failure to go out to tear down the fences of disparity and injustice. A long time ago, when I was but 12 years old, I had moved to, uh, my family had moved to a new home, and I went to a new school. And as I went to that school that day, there was a, a young woman, <laughs> a little girl, that liked me. Now, I didn't know it first, but after my second or third day at school, I went to my desk that I had been assigned and realized I was, and still am, a nerd. And so I was very quiet with my glasses on, and I was very little. And I opened my desk. It was back in the olden days where they had these wooden pallets or wooden shelves, and you lifted it up, and all your books and papers were underneath. And in there was this little note. And it was folded up, and it was to Arthur. So I opened up the note, and it said, Dear Arthur, I like you. Who do you like? Please check the box. And there were little girls' names on it. And it was signed Victoria Hawkins. Well, I didn't know who Victoria Hawkins was, so I threw the note away. So the next day, I, with not much on my mind, I, I walked to school and went in, and then I opened up my, my desk, and there was a note. And guess what it said? Dear Arthur, I like you. Who do you like? Please check the box. Little girl's name signed Victoria Hawkins. I don't know who Victoria Hawkins is. I looked around. There was no one looking at me, so I just threw it away. Well, the next day, you know what happened? I went to school. And there on my desk, as I opened it up, you're right, there was a note. Yep, it said the same thing. Dear Arthur, I like you. Who do you like? Please check the box. Signed, Victoria Hawkins. So I threw it away, and the next day, the note was there again. Same thing. So I looked around, and there was this girl looking at me, kind of like you're looking at me right now. And I knew, oh, that must be Victoria Hawkins. So I just threw the note away because I didn't like girls. 
I was afraid of them. Still I am. <laughs> and so I noticed something, however, that everyone in the class was teasing Victoria Hawkins. At lunch, when we went to lunch, she always sat by herself, and even I didn't sit by myself, but she did, and every once in a while, someone would walk by and knock her milk over, and she'd clean it up. At recess, back in those days, the boys went to recess on one side of the playground, the girls on the other side of the playground, and she sat in the middle, and they would throw snowballs at her during the winter. And during the warm days, would run by and kick the toys that she had played with, and they'd laugh at her. They bullied that little girl. I never did. And yet every day I'd receive a note. Dear Art, I like you. Who do you like? Please check the box. And I threw it away. Well, seventh grade ended eighth grade. We went to high school. And Chicago's a big, big city. And there were over 2,000 kids in our class, in our school. In my class, there were five, six hundred kids, but I'm a nerd, and I had honors classes. And I say that because there were about 30 of us who had every class together in Victoria. A smart little girl was one of them. Well, Victoria always sat near the door as we came in and out. By this time, she had stopped sending me notes, but they had not Stop bullying her, and the reason she sat near the door is she wanted to hurry out to get to the next class because the kids were much bigger and much meaner, and a whole lot of them. And they teased and bullied this girl. Well, our freshman year ended, our sophomore, our junior year. And finally, our senior year came. To me, it was just a flash, but to her, I'm sure. I'm certain it was an eternity. Well, at that point, when we graduated, I realized she had not gone to our senior prom, nor to any football game. And even graduation, I had received a small scholarship. And I sat near her because of her last name. And she didn't even come to our graduation, even though she received a scholarship. Well, later that year, 1963, before I went off to the University of Illinois, Dr. King had called for a boycott in Chicago because of all the segregation, and I went, and I was arrested because I was standing up for what I felt was right and the disparity and the injustice that existed and still does in the nation which I love. I was proud that I stood up, but it was at that moment I realized that I was a coward, for I not once stood up for Victoria Hawkins. I was afraid. I was afraid what others might say. That is my failure. But I have sworn for the rest of my life I will never be quiet again. I believe that St. Martin de Porres was that kind of man, that kind of saint. All of us, every single day, in moments and in times and in people that others do not see, we, every single one of us, are called to a goodness, a greatness that others can't understand. That is our charge, not only on this day because of St. Martin de Porres, but we have to do that, stand up for justice, because that is the Christian, the believer's day. And it is our call. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, called by God to serve and stand with and all of our brothers and sisters in the human family and challenged by God to take down our fences and our walls and open up the doors of our hearts, we present our prayers and our petitions to him. The response today is, 
Lord Jesus, hear us. For the church, that she will continue to inspire the faithful to serve the most vulnerable so that they may live with dignity and hope. We pray, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus hear, us. hear us. For our nation during this election day, that in the midst of turmoil and division, each one of us will be committed to peace, justice, and reconciliation. We pray, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus, hear us. us. For all candidates who desire to serve our nation, may they commit to the common good and pledge for liberty and justice for all. We pray, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus, hear us. us. For our community, that we might act together to eradicate violence and racism. We pray, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus, hear us. us. For the sick, we pray, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus, hear us. us. For all those who have died, may they enjoy the peace of Christ forever. We pray, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus, hear us. Lord Jesus, we entrust you these, our needs and our prayers, those that we have voiced aloud and those which yet to find words in the depths of our hearts, knowing that you respond to them according to your holy will, as we make them to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all God's Most merciful God, who were pleased to create in blessed Martin de Poiz the new man in your image, the old having passed away, Graciously grant, we pray, that renewed like him, we may offer you the acceptable sacrifice of conciliation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just to give you thanks and raise to you a hymn of glory and praise, O Lord, Father of infinite goodness. For by the word of your Son's gospel, you have brought together one church from every people, tongue, and nation. And having filled her with life by the power of your Spirit, you never cease through her to gather the whole human race into one. Manifesting the covenant of your love, she dispenses without ceasing the blessed hope of your kingdom and shines bright as the sign of your faithfulness, which in Christ Jesus our Lord, you promised would last for eternity. And so, with all the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, while with all the church, as one voice, we acclaim. be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we're gathered by his love. And when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Lord, renew your church by the light of the gospel. Strengthen the bond of unity between the faithful and the pastors of your people, together with Francis our Pope and Leonard our Bishop and the whole order of bishops, that in a world torn by strife, 
your people may shine forth as a prophetic sign of unity and concord. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling pla place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, with St. Thomas More, St. Martin de Porres, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be
Let us pray. By the power of this sacrament, Lord, we pray, lead us always in your love through the example of Blessed Martin de Porres and bring to fulfillment the good work you have begun in us until the day of Christ Jesus, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Once again, a special thanks to Deacon Art Miller for being with us today. What a blessing and, uh, it has been to have you with us. Great. God bless you. Also, special thanks to our musicians, Lauren and Michael, and to our reader today, Agnes Kumi, who is a junior here at Yale College at jo Jonathan Edwards College. Special uh, blessing to have you with us today, too, Agnes. Thank you. The Lord be with you. And with and your spirit. spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. This Mass is ended. Let us go and be the good news of Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God.